Hi, Joe Glavin with City Floor Supply. Welcome to Facebook Live and welcome to our repair shop. Uh, we're on our disassembly and inspection table and today we're going to talk about um, just some maintenance tips for your edgers. We picked the American Sanders uh, 7R and the B2. So what we're going to focus on typically right now are uh, brush changes, carbon brush changes. The B2 has two style brushes. Uh, the new style has a brush holder that's similar to that. And the old style as non-pigtail brushes and they're here. And I'm gonna talk about pigtail versus non-pigtail and an older style unit. So we'll, um, we'll change these out. This just happens to be in for repair. So we'll just change them out and show it to you. I won't be able to, to run that, but we'll get to that later. Um, and then the 7R. Uh, the 7R also has two style brushes. So we have a non-pigtailed uh, brush, these carbon brushes and one with a pigtail. So the pigtailed brush goes into the new style um, brush holder block and it's really not that new. They've made this change several years ago. Um, all of these changes were in an effort to reduce arcing and improve the life of the commutator. So the commutator on your armature, this is an armature out of a 7R, is this copper part right here. And if you can't see it in the video, um, this armature has a gap from the top to the bottom. And that gap is essentially a wear item because of the carbon. So this carbon is harder than that copper and with some conductivity issues, that kind of thing, you'll get arcing and it'll just wear it away. So you'll create a nice little groove here and I'm gonna draw that up here just so you can see it. So we have, and this goes for just the B2 and the 7R. Uh, I'm gonna exaggerate it. So And then we have our shaft with our gear on it. So, um, this copper commutator, the brush rides right here. And when it's not sitting flush and you have a gap here, you get an arc that wants to jump across both sides to create contact. As you get that arc, and you'll see it, like particularly if you're edging a closet um, or in a, a darker room in an old house where it's like lighting up the building or the room, um, kind of like a Tesla coil, you'll, you're eating away at the copper um, and you're not creating what is called proper commutation. So we change brushes so that we don't get to this point. Uh, eventually you will just get there because the carbon brush is harder than the copper. So when we um, might need this later, don't know. So when this brush rides in that pocket, and creates a gap. We start eating away the copper, but we also um, start eating away inside each bar here is what they call mica insulation. And when you get down to that mica, that's essentially like a glass insulator. And that is harder than the brush. <laughs> so that wears out the brush. When you get to that point, typically this will need to be turned in the lathe to make it flat again 
and then we undercut it to cut that mica insulation and create the groove again so we don't wear out the brushes that we just are going to be putting on. So long story short, these guys right here will affect your RPM, they'll affect your power, meaning how much you're able to grind without the machine feeling like it's going to stall. Um, yeah, so these, if these go bad, other things can go bad. You can burn up your armature, you can uh, short out the copper bars. Um, when you lose or have the poor insulation in between each bar, you can um, increase amp draw when these have poor commutation and burn out switches. So there's a lot that can go on here um, that you can avoid by just changing these guys or checking them. And when would I check them? You know, I would check them once a month. Um, the B2 is much easier to check visually because you just have to take the lid off. Um, you know, it's just a simple Allen wrench, which you probably have in your toolbox and take the lid off and uh, you can visually see how long the brush is. Um, you know, we've had brushes come in or machines come into the shop where they were literally down to the copper pigtail that's embedded inside here. So you want to change them before that. Um, the 7R is just a little trickier. Uh, it has a front and a back vent where you can pop it off. You can look in there and just kind of judge how much. So this is in here, in here like this. Um, how much the brush is coming out so that you can tell how much is touching the commutator. Um, if your spring mechanism is all the way in, there's a good chance that your brush needs to be changed. Um, what most people uh, don't realize is that this is a four pole system or motor, meaning it has four brushes, one, two, three, four brushes that are in here. This guy is two pole motor. It says two brushes. So, well, where are the other two brushes? If I have, if this brush block is inside here and I have one at the front vent and one at the back vent, then the other two are underneath these plates. And that's what people fail to change. Um, so four brushes for the 7R and you know that may be pretty basic for people but it may be new for people that are just buying 7Rs and maybe transitioning over from say uh, B2s. Now for sure the switch that is behind or the uh, brush right that is behind the switch here is a lot more difficult to get to, uh, but it shouldn't, it's, that should not let you not change it. You should change that one. Um, I also would not just change one. I would change all four. If I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do all four. It also gives you the opportunity to visually inspect um, the armature and look at the commutator to see if there's anything that's failing in here. You know, why am I prematurely eating up brushes? Um, you know, it could be that there's an issue here. Um, there are some other things that can happen. The field could be going bad. That is the, the part that this is in. Um, but typically, most of the electrical problems, if it's not the plug and switch, it's in here um, with the brushes. So 7R brushes, um, I guess it's best for me to show you how to get the spring out from this block. So that's what I'm going to do. It'd be hard to see inside there. So this is the spring mount that holds this brush in. And all this is doing is putting tension on this little roll coil spring on that brush. So it's sending it forward, putting pressure on that commutator the whole time. So this guy is what puts pressure on this guy. 
when this guy is in here. So this guy is gonna ride in here and um, you wanna take the pigtail of this and I put it down. You're gonna slide that in and then hook it up. Right there. And then you're just simply gonna slide the brush past the holder and snap it in. Now, my finger is the armature and I'm trying to keep the wires away. And that's how it's held in there. So it takes a little bit um, to get it out. You just push down and let it pop out. This comes out. Just make sure it doesn't fall down in there on you. Um, and I'm going to show you the. So you're going to want to take off. The tab here. Pull your old brush out. And all of that is happening here. Here. in here and last but not least behind the switch So, um, once we change our brushes out, we typically uh, seat the brush to the commutator. And that goes for whether or not we uh, machine the commutator, or if it's just an old commutator and a brush change that you're doing in the field you will want to seat the brush and we will seat the brush um, on the B2 just because it's open and you can see it but it's the same concept I would normally close up the 7R uh, like I'm doing here and put the spring back in and I would seat it from the front or the rear. And we will go over that on the B2. Same concept, just a different machine, and we'll only need to do it once so that you can see it. Probably the most technically difficult would be behind the switch, only because you have to remove the switch um, sorry, it's like unbelievably hot in the shop today. Um, so the 7R or the B2, uh, I do have an old one and we'll go over changing these brushes that don't have the new brush holder. Um, the new brush holder is just slightly different. It's not that much more difficult. There is one pretty critical step when you're installing this. Um, and these are convertible. You can um, put this style brush block or brush holder in the old B2. Again, this one is in for repair. So uh, if you can see these plastic um, retaining pieces lock the pins in for these that this spins around you would knock these out uh, remove the brushes remove the wire assembly knock these guys out and then you can see the diameter of that brush holder will fit right back up into that slot so this is this is retrofittable is that a word retrofittable um, 
which is nice because these new brush blocks really do help save the commutator and the brushes um, and just help the machine run better. So, uh, you know what, I'll just leave this off camera and we will do that next. So, for changing out the new brushes, we um, just unclip the brush holder, all right? And these are just simply um, wires that go to the winding and all we're doing, um, you know, when we talk about a two pole motor, we're talking like north and south. So when we energize the field that this wire is to, it's a mag it creates a magnetic field, right? Magnetic fields have a north and south pole. Um, as this unit spins, it's doing north and south pole at 60 hertz, which is our electric. Um, so when I take this brush holder out, I have to remove these two top screws here and here. Let me just do this. And you know, most hardwood floor contractors, they don't want any part of electricity. That's fine. Um, it is a simple change. You could do this on your shop table back in, you know, your garage shop or um, your back of your showroom or anything like that. This is a simple fix, um, but we are a repair shop. So we have jigs that we make um, and this just happens to be one of them. This is an old Hummel control rod that was cut and then tapered a little bit on the lathe so that it fits just right in the holes. I know I'm making it look easy, but um, you would use the same style punch to take out these old plastic pieces. You'll punch them out just like that. Again, to fit these new ones. And these are a slide fit. Um, they work, they go in pretty, pretty easily. Uh, so, when you pop this out, now this is new, right? So fairly easy. Um, it, you're gonna kinda scoop it out once these black pieces clear this casted frame and, and just kinda scoop it out. Um, you can see that the brush is now distended and it, you know, it is spring loaded. Um, the springs on this holder are internal. So what's pushing that brush out is this piece right here. And it's an internal spring that's riveted in. So when I change these brushes, um, I just pop off that guy right there. Now in the shop when we're changing the brushes, I'm not gonna do it because this is brand new. Uh, we just cut this right off and pull this right out. But I should be able to work this out past the spring. And that's how we're gonna put the new one in, so just to show you. But we just cut them and pull them out. It's just a little quicker. Um, so we just feed that, feed that guy right through there. Again, the, the brush itself, the spring holder here is pretty flexible. And we just put that in. Um, I will connect it here. I can connect it once it goes in. Just make sure everything's working right. Um, now, when you have an older armature that has a pretty big shoulder on it from being cut several times, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that this brush stays in to the best of your ability when you're working this into the, beat, into the unit. Um, we, and that's the part that I was saying that we wanna be careful at. We don't wanna break or chip the bottom of this brush because when we do that, we've now created a spot where arcing can happen, 
um, and when machine's arcing, it's not running right. Uh, so, but once this starts to touch the armature, you should be okay because it's, um, I don't know if you got that on camera, it's hard to see when I'm over here, but so I'm just kind of, let's see if I can get this, I'm just kind of angled in, it's going to be hard for me to, and then I'm just, it just kind of pops up, right? So once I get it to a certain point, um, I'm going to bring a screwdriver in and just going to press it up like that. Uh, essentially that brush has is changed and I didn't chip anything. Yeah. Okay. So again, that brush is now changed. Um, I want to put my screws back in. I'll probably, I usually start these by hand and then drive them in. Uh, it's, it's self threaded. So they are they pre-tapped? I think they are. No, so the screw is gonna tap it as they go in because they're a pretty tight fit. Okay. And you don't wanna strip them. So just get it down there. And then go ahead and tighten it up. So um, I'm gonna put the, the wire for the brush holder back on from the field. Uh, just kind of tuck it in from the lid here. And if you can see it, it's going to be hard, but that's the new brush right there. And the copper commutator. So it's sitting on it tight. Um, we are going to seat this brush now and so i'm going to put a bag on it uh, i'll put some hearing protection on some eye protection um, these commutator stones are available um, if you just put commutator in the search bar at cityfloorsupply.com you'll find them uh, they come in packs of four or six i can't remember but essentially what they do is dress the commutator, they create a powder dust that gets underneath the brush and helps seat the brush to the shape of the commutator. All of that helps with commutation and the better the commutation, the better the machine's going to run. So we'll seat this and you'll see, hopefully I don't blow everybody out of here, but you'll see some of this white pulverized dust come out. Um, you'll see arcing. Uh, go down and on older machines you'll even hear the machine speed up uh, that'll sh that's really a good indicator that you're getting a good seat for the brush onto the um, onto the commutator we have any viewers in Alaska because that's where I feel like I need to be right now <laughs> all right Cord. Bag. So I'm in high speed here on the B2. It's got two sw uh, switch for high low. So you kind of see the rotation is this way for the armature. So I try to get behind it as best I can so that it picks up this dust and brings it and polishes underneath. So here we go.
So what we created there is essentially we polished the armature and you can see very clean uh, compared to that black that's on there. You know, that's the carbon embedding itself in the copper and we have cleaned all that off. Uh, these brushes are now seated and fixed to this armature. And we've avoided any gaps that might be created from old wear. Now this particular armature, we'd have to turn on the lathe and make it nice and flat, square it up so that this brush rides nice and flat. So for, so that's the new B2. Um, if anybody has any questions, feel free. Um, if you didn't see something, you wanna see it again, just let me know. Uh, we're gonna move over to the older B2 and put that back there. And this here. Grand Co. Flooring says, very informative. Thank you, Joe. You're welcome. Thanks for watching. Okay. So let's get this guy. Change spots. Again, the handles are off of this. Um, gearbox is covers on. And, you know, I would, much, again, much simpler um, brush change out on this. You simply loosen that brush retainer. Uh, it's, a, it's actually a, a rectangular washer. Um, pull the old brush out. And the old style brushes are notched. Um, you can see the shape. Right, and that matches the curvature on the armature. And that notch right there. I don't know if you can see it there, better there, is the wear point where you definitely need to change these brushes. You shouldn't get, let it actually get that far. Um, what happens when you have a spring-loaded product that's on an, being pushed from an angle to you know, a round surface? Eventually, you will change the angle of the brush from hitting like this to literally touching the commutator instead of like this you'll be you'll switch it um, and that is not good for the polarity of the machine or commutation you never want to let these brushes get down to the point where they're literally either sitting flat or uh, about to angle the other way it just means the brush is way too worn so um, that's really it for the brush change uh, on this unit now, this is more complicated, but this is a better system. So we're going to take the old brush, and you can notice no pigtail, right? You might even notice the color difference. Hopefully it comes up on the video. And the color difference does mean something as well. Um, this brush has um, less carbon higher graphite content to it this is har uh, higher carbon content which means this brush is harder so this brush will wear the commutator more quickly uh, again because it's copper so we would simply put this in at the right angle okay that this one came out this one came out like this we're going to put it in the same way right we're not going to put it in this way because then we'd have to seat that whole thing and wear all of this down to get it to the right angle. So we need to be this angle, seat it right in, 
tighten this up. Uh, you don't want to tighten it so hard that you crack this. You need a new brush. Um, you do not want to crack that. Also, you do not want to take out the brush holder screw so far that it drops down into the field. <laughs> that's a problem so if that happens and you can't fish it out with a magnet uh, you're probably gonna have to take this apart and take this top off uh, expose the motor cooling fan and the whole armature this is the motor cooling fan and then get it from make sure it's not embedded in here it could be bad so try not to get that screw and and washer dropped down in there I've done it so just it happens so we're simply making sure that washer is out there we're gonna open that up slide that in tighten that up and while we're here we're gonna look at uh, the spring action make sure that's good that it's always constantly putting pressure onto the um, for the brush onto the commutator and then we're also looking at any of these wire connections how this uh, wire coming out of the field here ties into the brush holder on both sides so that if it's burned that we replace it we put a new terminal lead on it and that's again that's just standard maintenance um, you want to make sure that these things are riding with pressure and that they're not being hindered by anything and that there isn't any burn on any of these terminals uh, from excessive arcing and poor commutation then we would replace that um, so now we would just seat this I can't seat this right now because this is just disassembled um, but we would do the same thing. Uh, we would put the commutator stone onto the armature here and we would clean up all this black and make sure it was seated. Now this particular unit, even though it's an older unit and has these older style brushes, it is, um, this commutator is very, uh, very flat. It looks relatively new to be honest. So it was probably changed at some point in time. All right, so that does it for brushes. We have three different styles. Um, unless your edger is, a, is an edger, say some of the European edgers, um, they are uh, capacitor start. Um, tip, some of them don't have brushes your capacitor if it does fail probably your your machine won't start and that's besides going right to the plug or the switch that's probably the next step so a, an edger with a capacitor is just different um, capacitor start is different than uh, repulsion induction motor that runs with uh, carbon brushes so um, I think that's it I don't have an old 7R here to show you the non-pigtailed brush change, but it's just as easy as the 7R, or is this old B2. You literally hold the spring back, pop this back in. It's, there's nothing complicated about it. Um, I just don't have a unit here. All the old units I have look like they've been converted. So, um, that is all I've got. Any questions? Well, uh, again, thanks for joining us. I hope that was helpful for you. Again, these all, this can all happen in the field. Uh, maybe not this one. Like if you were to retrofit this kind of a machine with this one, probably do that in your shop. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to let us know. We'll probably upload this to YouTube so that you can see that actually happening. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, you can find these Comstones, all of these brushes, brush holders, you can just go to cityfloorsupply.com uh, or give us a call, 800-737-1786.
Have a great day.